Hi, my name is Ingrid and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, it's going to be a little bit different than my normal videos because instead of giving you a pattern or a tutorial, I'm going to be giving you advice that I think is really important for beginner crochet and knitters to know. Even intermediate and advanced, but they matter any of this. So I've been knitting for like around a decade <laughs> and I learned crochet relatively recently because um, I stopped knitting and I came back to knitting crochet and before that I used to sew a lot so I know a lot about how to make patterns and how to construct clothing in a way that will fit you and will look good so that's just my history in case you don't trust my advice um, so also one thing before I start these necklaces these ones I think they're super cute and my sister made them um, she has a Depop, so if you could check that out, that would be great. I think they're super cute, and she has like tons of different colors and styles. And they're really well made, she hand makes them. Anyway, back to the main advice. One thing I think you should consider when you're starting a knitting project, one of the things I'm going to mention, or a crochet project, either one. All this advice goes to both, pretty much. Um, People my age, right, and in my world in America, in, you know, even globally, fast fashion is a big thing for people my age, right? Especially those, like, really, really cheap fashion companies, you know, that are made in China and are, like, one dollar for a t-shirt, right? And I personally, one of the reasons that I stopped started knitting and crocheting again was because I stopped buying fast fashion, right? I haven't bought any fast fashion in like a year and a half, right? And I'm super happy with this decision, but I wanted to put it out because later on in this video we're going to talk about sustainability in knitting, but for now we're going to talk about making something by hand versus fast fashion. I think before you start a project, you really have to make sure that the thing that you're making you actually really love. Right, not just because it's trendy, not just because you know you saw Kendall Jenner wearing it, because you actually love it and you think you're gonna wear it for years. Because I've personally made the mistake of knitting stuff that like was trendy for like one week. Right, it took me forever to knit it. By the time I finished, it wasn't trendy anymore. And then I had this item of clothing that I didn't want to wear again, you know? And if you're putting that much hard work and time and effort into knitting something or crocheting something, you really want to make sure that you can wear it for a really long time. Not to mention, if you do it well, it's not going to like disintegrate like the fast fashion clothing. It'll be really sturdy and it'll stay like that for a while, right? So you can wear it for years. So just keep that in mind when you're considering what you want to make right the second thing I would advise to all beginner knitting and crocheters is to use patterns to use tutorials to use videos you find right I think that's one of the main mistakes that I did because I had a bit of a sewing background and I knew how to like you know construct clothing in the beginning I kind of like had this in my mind that like I would know how to do it and the first sweater I actually made was like a few years ago and I knit it and it took me months. It took me at least two months. Obviously, you know, I was in school, so I was busy, but I was working on it a decent amount, right? And I kind of refused to look up a pattern, right? And I was like, you know what? I can do this. I know how to make sleeves. I can do this. And I spent, like, I did the shoulder part at least ten times, right? Just doing it again and again and again. Um, and then when I was finished, it didn't even fit properly. So my advice was when you're a beginner to use patterns and tutorials on YouTube, right? So there's tons of free patterns. Pretty much every single yarn company has free patterns. And I personally don't think that they're very cute. They're not very like trendy. They're not very now, right? They're mostly for an older generation. But they have really good once you get to a point in your knitting, you can mix and match, right? So you can be like, this sweater is really cute, but I don't know how to make a sleeve. And you go to these, I'll link some below. There's tons of websites. All the major knitting the yarn companies have them because in the pattern they use their yarn, so then you want to buy it, right? Um, and you just, you can mix and match, mix and match, right? Even before that, if you have a, you know, less of a skill level and you want something simpler just follow a tutorial 
right? Like you can find some that are great. You can find ways to adapt them to your body relatively easily. If you want, you can find some that are just like, that tell you plus size exactly, right? So whatever your body type is, there's patterns and tutorials for you on YouTube, right? You could also, one thing I know, it's not free, they're not free, but you can buy patterns. I think they're typically like three to five bucks on Etsy, right? And a lot of them are people like my age, young people, especially crochet patterns, right? And you just buy them and then you can make that pattern and it's great, right? One thing I wouldn't recommend, especially money-wise, is buying a pattern book. So a lot of like pattern designers, I guess, like they release these books and there's like let's say 50 patterns, right? And the problem with them, in my mind, is that they're kind of expensive, right? And you're typically only going to do one to two patterns, right? You don't want to do every single pattern in the book, so it's a lot of a big waste of money. My main point is, and you don't have to spend any money whatsoever if you don't want to. I, for one, knitting for 10 years, have never once bought a pattern in my life, right? I've used all the free patterns, I've watched tons of YouTube videos, I've watched, you know, I've read tons of blog posts, whatever, but the point is, I've never bought a pattern. So you don't have to spend any money. Okay, this leads me to my next point, money, right? How expensive things are. Okay, so let's talk about money and how expensive knitting and crocheting is. So obviously to start, you're gonna need crochet hooks and knitting needles. That's a given, right? Those shouldn't be expensive. You can buy a nice pack with a ton of different sizes for relatively cheap, and like Michael's or on Amazon, I mean, or Joanne, right? Joanne's fabric, I think. Um, but one of the things I wanted to make sure to point out is a lot of companies, they see that knitting and crocheting has become more popular, especially with young people, and they see that people don't have any confidence, and they don't have ability in their skill, and they kind of take advantage of that, right? And I'm not trying to paint this whole conspiracy theory about how, like, evil companies are, which, you know, that's debatable, but the point is that you want to make sure that your self-confidence, lack of self-confidence, I have to say, when you're starting something new, isn't being taken advantage of. For example, those fluffy blankets. A year or two ago, it became really, really popular. There was tons of tutorials on YouTube, tons of tutorials everywhere, to take that really big yarn and make these fluffy blankets, right? And the reason, in my opinion, was it because it was so popular, was because people saw that and they were like, well, I can do that. I have absolutely no skill and I can do that, right? And so then they would spend like hundreds of dollars it's insane to buy yarn to make one blanket. Not to mention there was a whole problem with the blankets because the yarn wasn't actually like, you know, spun properly, so it was just falling apart. But the point is that companies know that people don't have any self-esteem when it comes to these things, and they advertise stuff as really easy, right? Like you can buy a kit and it tells you exactly what to do, but it's really expensive. Or like this huge chunky yarn is like insanely expensive, right? So in my opinion, you shouldn't, the materials you have, like the yarn and the knitting needles you need to make something, shouldn't cost more than what it would cost to buy a finished product. And I'm not talking about like the $1 t-shirt from Wish, I'm talking about like a nice finished project, right? Those fluffy blankets, you could buy them for $50, and you ended up paying $150 to buy the yarn, right? Which is absolutely ridiculous. So, my other thing is, there's tons of ways to get cheap yarn. Tons of ways. And that leads me to my other, you know, topic, is sustainability in knitting. So, you know, obviously I said before, one of the reasons I decided to start knitting was because I wanted it to be more, you know, I stopped buying fast fashion. And for me, it actually works out great because I don't really see something and I'm like, I'm dying to buy it, right? Because instead I see something that I think is super cute and it's mint or crocheted and then I make it and then I have it, you know? Obviously most people aren't at that skill level yet, but like you'll get there. I think for me, it's really helped me not want to buy any fast fashion, right? But, you know, then, of course, because one of the reasons I'm doing this is because, you know, I care about the environment, there's this whole issue about sustainable yarn, right? 
Um, that it doesn't really exist. Sustainable yarn just doesn't exist. I have done tons of research. I've looked everywhere. I've looked at all these stores. I've looked at some YouTube videos. I've read a ton of like news articles about sustainable yarn, and it really doesn't exist. So like, and most of the the most sustainable yarn you can buy is I've seen on Etsy. Right? People actually take old sweaters and they unravel them, right? And they make yarn from that. Or they unravel them and then spin it and make yarn for that, right? And you can actually do that at home. I'll make some a link some YouTube videos, I've done it before, where you go to like a thrift store and you buy a big sweater for like 50 cents and you can just unravel it and use the yarn. It's really smart and it's great for the environment because you're reusing something, right? So I am currently using for a dress that I'm making this like bamboo yarn and it's like, I actually have it right here. So it's like labeled as sustainable. See, it's like sustainable stitching. It's Lion Brands yarn. And the reason I bought it wasn't because I thought it was sustainable, it's because of the texture I want for this dress. It's like a slip dress that I'm making. You'll probably see it on my channel in a few weeks. But the point is that, I don't know how the, it's bamboo. Right, but I don't know how they get it. They're bamboo. I don't know if the labor is fair and ethical. It was six dollars, which, like, to be honest, for bamboo, for regular yarn, that's expensive. That's a small amount of yarn. Paying six dollars for it is really expensive. That being said, because it's bamboo, I kind of understand. But just because it's bamboo doesn't mean it's sustainable or ethical, right? Like, there's tons of there's many different ways to turn bamboo into yarn, and some of them are using harsh, harsh chemicals, right? Really bad work environments. And we don't know. There's absolutely no way of finding out what, how they make their bamboo into yarn, right? We don't know if they planted bamboo, which is good for the environment, or they went to bamboo forest and chopped it off down, which is obviously not good for the environment. So, my biggest thing about sustainable knitting and crocheting is reusing, right? Reuse as much as you can. I always go to thrift, whenever I go to thrift shops, I go quite a lot because, you know, lack of fast fashion. I look and I always, there's tons of yarn. I, half the time ago, I find some yarn that I buy and it's super cheap and it's second hand and most of the time it has the labels on it because someone got it as a gift or they bought it and they didn't want it anymore and they give it to the thrift store and then you buy it for like 50 cents to a dollar, right? You can also, again, undo all the sweat sweaters that you buy. There's 10 many techniques to do that. And also the other thing I would really advise, it's kind of difficult because you work really hard on a project and you love it at the time, right? And maybe you outgrow it or your style changes and you don't want to wear it anymore, right? So I would recommend unraveling it. Half the yarn that I've used, I'll show the dress on my screen. I made this dress for $14 because half the yarn I got at the fifth store for like $1 and half the yarn I reused. I mean, I have a drawer full of yarn, right? So like, I know I have quite a lot of yarn that I can use, but a lot of them I undid old projects that I didn't want anymore, I didn't wear anymore. And now I have this dress that I absolutely love and I wear all the time, right? So it's important to like not hold on to things too tightly. So one last thing I wanted to mention was making, using a tutorial and changing it to your body. So this includes like plus size people, mid size people, skinny people, any size, right? Most of the tutorials you see on YouTube, including mine, right, they give you the exact amount of stitches and the exact amount of, you know, how many you should cast on, how many rows you should knit, how many rows you should crochet, right? For their size. And typically the people are small, right? Like me, right? So I'm a small, I've always been a small. Um, I've never been plus size, so obviously I can't speak from a plus size experience, but I can say there's a huge lack of plus size knitting tutorials. I have to say that. But it seems really intimidating, and I understand that, but it's relatively easy to alter something to your size, right? Like once you get a tiny bit of knitting and crochet skill, you can easily alter stuff to your size. All the patterns that I make, I use my body as a reference, right? I don't, you know, I just use my body as a reference, I use my measuring tape, I measure how much I need, and then I cast on that amount of stitches, right? 
So like it's important not to be intimidated by these things because I know a lot of knitting crochet, you see something and you're like, oh my god. For example, cables, right? Or there's this knitting style called intarsia where you knit pictures, right? It looks super, it, you can also do it for crochet, excuse me. You, it looks super complicated, but it's not at all. Once you get in the hang of it, it's really easy. You know, and it's like kind of like riding a bike if you want to go back to it. For example, for me, I forget stitches all the time because I know like so many knitting stitches and I know so many crochet stitches that half the time I'm like, oh, I need to do a double crochet. Oops, I completely forgot how to do that, right? So then I just pull up a YouTube video, bam, remember, then I'm good, right? So I'm like, you know, you might want to start out with something where you don't have to change the size, right? So sign, find something that you know will fit you. Find, maybe make a bag, maybe make a hat, maybe make a top that like you, you know, you'll be able to fit well, right? And then once you've gotten a tiny bit of the hang of that, it's super easy to alter stitches. There's um, a really good video and it's how to alter patterns for plus size people and I'll link it in the description. It's super helpful, right? But the main point is you shouldn't get intimidated. You can figure out anything, right? But the point is, if you're interested in knitting or crocheting, you can do it. it. You just need to take it one step at a time, follow the tutorials, figure it out. You might get frustrated. I always get frustrated. But then you'll figure it out, and then you'll have this thing that you made. And it's like, for me, it's literally the best feeling ever. Because I made something, and I can have it for the rest of my life if I want to wear it. I mean, you know, maybe when I'm 40, I don't want to be wearing a crop top that shows most of my stomach, but the point is that this is stuff that's made well, you know, and you can wear it for a really long time. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is knitting versus crocheting. This is something that's really interesting for me because I'm a knitter, right? Like I know how to crochet, I can make things in crochet, but I like knitting more. I've always been a knitter, I've knit most of my life, so, you know, for me, knitting is what I prefer. But, to be honest, I would recommend trying both, or not even trying both, learning both. I think it's kind of like, you know how people, you know, I'm learning how to speak Chinese and I know how to speak English and that's about it. But I know that people always say, once you've learned one of like the romance languages, it's really easy to pick up the other one, right? Because you have this basis and this knowledge, and you know how to learn the language, right? And there a lot of the stuff is really similar. I think it's really like that. Like the hand motion is a tiny bit different, but the whole constructing a garment and the whole like adding stuff and making it fit to your body, it's the same. It's exactly the same. And I would really recommend doing both. If you're gonna start with something, I would recommend starting with crocheting. Because the reason why, even though I prefer knitting, um, is because most of the people my age are crocheting. Right, and the reason you want something, you know, a lot of people my age be doing something is like there's a lot of tutorials and patterns about crocheting that's like cute stuff that someone my age and myself would find, you know, cute. Right, like knitting seems to be for an older generation, which means that a lot of the patterns and a lot of tutorials you find for knitting are for older people, and the style is kind of different than what most people my age would wear. That being said, there's tons of people who have cute styles and cute patterns and they knit, right? I'm just saying that I think starting off, it's a little bit easier to make really simple but really cute things right away. Um, I think that anyone can learn how to crochet and once you learn, then you can learn knitting and it's great, right? I just think that as long as you start trying and give yourself a chance, I want to say that. I don't think that you should pick up your knitting needles, your crochet hook, try to do it for like an hour and get frustrated and quit. No, what I would recommend doing is starting with something super, super easy. Because for me, the most motivation to continue learning something is when I've accomplished something, right? So like if I'm just starting out with something, for example, you were just starting out with crocheting, right? And you try to crochet a super complicated sweater and it doesn't work out, you're gonna get super frustrated and quit understandably so because that's incredibly frustrating right 
So what I would recommend doing is starting with something easy. Make some kind of bandana, make some kind of scarf, you know, something that you don't need to worry about the sizing because it fits everyone. Make like a mini little bag and then you're done and then you have this sense of accomplishment and a sense of pride which I have to say is kind of addicting because then you have you want to do the next thing you're like oh my god I need to start the next thing and then you can progress harder and harder and harder things you know but I don't think you should start with something hard to begin with even if you think you can do it you probably can like I'm sure anyone could pick up a knitting needles or crochet hook knit this super complicated sweater I just think that as a it's gonna take you like two years to get it right. So I would recommend starting something simple so you can get the momentum going and get that feeling and the pride of accomplishment that you made something, right? Like by hand. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was when you do start for crocheting stuff or knitting stuff that's for your body, that's clothing, right? You should try everything on constantly. Try, try, try. Because here's the thing, I mean, even if you just have to hold it up like this, like, you should try that. Because I've knit tons of stuff, the crochet dress I was just talking about, I'll show it on the screen here. I did the entire thing twice. And I don't have two dresses, because I did the entire thing, all of the squares. I sewed the squares together, and I tried it on, and I realized, oh my god, this is like four sizes too big right because I was following a pat like I was following a picture a Zara dress that I saw you'll see if you watch my video and decide to make it um and it's like the squares were way too big and so I had to do the, all of the squares over I changed the square size I changed all the stitches and then you know it turned out great I really love it and then it was fine but if I had just tried it on after I made a few squares or you know, I show you how to find an adjustment for your body type, right? Like I show you how to make a pattern for your body type and how to count how many squares you need. Um, I should have done that. I didn't. Because I thought I, you know, sometimes your ego gets a little bit better of you and you think, oh no, I've been doing this for so long, I can just tell. You can't, right? Just keep trying stuff on. Um, yeah, so that's something. And the other thing I would like to say is I was super impressed over like the main pan like the pandemic point where everyone was knit crocheting those Harry style sweaters. People who had no idea how to crochet had never done anything like that in their life. They were literally just picking out yarn and crocheting these sweaters, which looked amazing. I was super impressed. I think you should take that as an example and see how like literally anyone can just crochet or knit anything that they want, right? Obviously, it's better to start small, like I just said, but there's tons of patterns that are designed for beginners in the sense that they're incredibly repetitive. I think that was one of the really great things about the Harry Style sweater was because it was oversized, so it fit a ton of bodies, right? It wasn't like this tight thing that you needed to measure for your body type. And once you did the squares, like you were just making squares and then you were sewing them together. So it wasn't like you were knitting this whole complicated thing, right? You were just crocheting, excuse me, not like you were crocheting this whole complicated thing. You were literally just crocheting squares and sewing them together, right? Which is kind of like my dress, except for the whole top part. But the point is that like, it's really easy to learn how to do something, to spend a lot of time, to learn how to make this perfect square, and then it's repeating it over and over and over and over again, right? So I honestly think that anyone can do anything that they want, you know? Like you need some patience and you don't need a lot of money. You can spend as much money as you want on crocheting and knitting. Like if you have enough money, if that's what you want to spend it on, go ahead, right? Buy really fancy expensive yarn, that's fine, right? But you don't have to. I think people don't seem to realize that you literally don't have to spend basically any money, right? Like for, you know, you can just go to the thrift store, find yarn there, you can, you know, what I found is like, I don't know if you get like birthday gifts from your friends and family, your relatives, but a lot of the time people like don't know what to get you, right? It's just like awkward thing, like, oh, my cousin, I see them like once a year, what should I get them? You tell them to buy you yarn and they get super happy about it because it's something that's really cheap and they can find yarn that they think is cool and then it gives you inspiration of something to make, right? 
Like I'm just saying, there's tons of ways to get yarn and it doesn't have to be expensive. The other thing I would like to mention when you're following a pattern is you don't have to use the yarn that they're using, right? Like, I think sometimes it's easier for people because you're like, I have to do every single step that the people say, right? Like, every single step that they say, and then it'll turn up just like theirs. Yes, that's true, and if you want to do that, that's fine, right? But like, for me, for example, my tutorials, a lot of the yarn, I found it in a thrift shop, right? Like, my green top, I'm going to show on the screen right here. I found both of those balls of yarn in a thrift shop for one dollar each so it was two dollars total for me right but if someone were to use the same yarn as me it would be around six bucks which is still very cheap you know for a top i think it is still very cheap but like the point is that for me i always use yarn that i find really cheaply but if you're following the exact yarn that i'm using and you can't just find the same yarn and you can't just happen to find it at a thrift store that's not how it works right just pay attention to what size it is and buy your own yarn like this super really easy like you know sizing charts for yarn sizes and yarn like types right and like even if it's a little bit different it's fine it'll still turn out good you know I think that people need to recognize that they're smart you can figure out stuff by yourself and you can want there's tons of resources tons of resources to help you figure out exactly what you need so that's what I have to say about that. Um, I am so happy that crochet and knitting is becoming more popular, like especially in fashion. You know, there's like tons of those really nice knit dresses and crochet tops, and I think that's just great. And I really am against fast fashion, and I really advise you try to make your own things, you know? Like, as, a, you know, as difficult as it is to get sustainable yarn, like, that's okay, because it's still better than buying really cheap, unsustainable clothing. So, I just think that you should keep that in mind. A lot of, like, crochet knitting stuff, it just, it looks, it's pretty easy to make it look really professional. You know, I think that's one of the issues and one of the benefits of knitting and crocheting. It looks a lot more difficult than it is. So, when someone sees you wear something, they're like, oh my god, I can't believe you made that. At the same time, it also kind of stops people from trying it out because it looks intimidating, you know, it looks difficult. It's something really new. But I think that anyone can crochet anything, right? And plus size, you can fit it to your body. Like, you can do that. It's relatively simple. And I'm gonna link that video down below, which just shows how to like make patterns. Okay, so to quickly sum it up, you don't have to spend a lot of money if you don't want to. Um, and everything looks a lot more intimidating than it is. It, try to think about the environment, um, especially think about if you see something, you think it's cute, try to make it by yourself, right? It's so much more ethical and sustainable, and it's a lot of fun. You get a really big sense of accomplishment, you know? Um, and, you know, it's not very difficult to alter things to your size. A lot of people think it is. It's not. You can figure it out. You're smart. Um, and last thing, if you like my necklaces, check out my sister's Depop. They're all handmade. So again, great for the environment, sustainable, ethical. And you know what? She even reused these beads that she found um, at like thrift stores and like old gifts. So even the beads are reused. So great. Check her out. Um, I'm linking her Depop down below. It's Aurelia's Beads. And thank you for watching. I hope you feel motivated to try to learn crocheting and or knitting.